chapter 31. Okay, before I get started with the reading, I have several new students. So again, at the end of this video, I am going to do sample DOK questions. And to my students, you may use them. And to my new students, welcome. I am so glad to have you guys. And I know that this whole situation is probably very difficult. So um, please know I'm happy to have you. And that if you need any help, please do not hesitate to ask. I know you've missed a lot and it's going to be quite the adjustment. So chapter 31. Bibwit heart, blue-green veins pulsing anxiously beneath the translucent skin of his learned head, waited on the shore of the pool of tears with two spirit Danes hobbled at his side. It hadn't been easy for him to get here. Since learning of Hatter Madigan's return, Red had become more of a tyrant than ever and demanded that he spend hours every day rewriting in Queendom Spiramus, glaring over his shoulder to make sure he scribbled down her venomous words exactly as she spat them at him. He had been forced to cross out entire pages of the ancient text and replace them with redisms, as if her imperial viciousness believed that by excising passages in which Queen Genevieve had once found strength and comfort, she might be able to destroy Prince Alice herself. You don't feel well, Red had screeched, hearing his excuse to forego his secretarial duties that day. What do I care if you don't feel well? I'll show you what it means not to feel well. But my hand is terribly cramped and would welcome a small respite from its daily exertions, Bibwit had corrected. With utmost respect, I suggest, couldn't her imperial viciousness imagine the newly written pages instead of having me write them for her? Red had laughed, showing her black, pointy teeth. Bibwit heart, you are not as cowardly as I thought. If I didn't let you live on the off chance of benefiting from all that lore you've crammed inside that pale, bald head of yours, I would almost be sorry to see you die. You have until the red moon rises to meet me in the observation dome. And so he had hurried to the pool of tears, knowing the risks. All Red had to do was envision him in a flash of imagination's eye, and that'd be it. But this was too important. He had to come. Ripples appeared on the surface of the pool, a disturbance down below. For the sake of wide imagination, let's hope that Dodge has met with success, said the learned tutor. One of the spirit Danes whinnied in response. The ripples on the pool grew in size and number, expanding outward from a bubbling center. Dodge burst through, gasping for air. He was alone looked wildly about him. Is she here? No, I thought. Something bobbed to the surface, the body of Princess Alice, limp and lifeless. The tutor rushed to the water's edge and helped Dodge carry the princess onto land, laying her out on the shore. What's wrong with her? Dodge asked. Bibwit put a large sensitive ear to Alice's slack mouth. She swallowed some water. I can hear it sloshing inside her. As befitted a royal tutor, Bibwit kept many instruments of learning hidden in the folds of his robe. From an inner pocket, he removed a soft flex tube, placed one end of it a short way down Alice's throat, and sucked mightily from the other end. Four times he filled the straw with water and spat it onto the ground. Alice convulsed, breathed, vomited water, and coughed her way back into full consciousness. Seeing her eyes open, a bed of nearby lilies broke into a giddy song of welcome. Dazed and bewildered, Alice sat up, chest muscles aching from her ribcage rattling coughs. Bibwit heart, she whispered. The tutor's ears twitched with pleasure. At your service, princess. She turned to her childhood friend, and a faint, wary smile played about her eyes and lips. Dodge Anders. Dodge stiffened. Hearing Alice say his name, it was like being reminded of a forgotten wound. Where is the music coming from? She asked. The lilies sang louder, and she saw them swaying happily on their stems, petals opening and closing in song. But flowers have no larynxes. What's a larynx? The flower said and laughed. It was as if she had entered a comforting dream, and for another moment she luxuriated in it. 
But then her features hardened with determination and she braced herself against the rich, almost palpable colors around her. This isn't real, she said. I shouldn't remember so vividly what's not supposed to exist. And you, all of this can't exist. Bibwit crinkled his brow in concern. Why not? Because. Not a very good answer, she knew. No one can possibly understand. We have to hurry, Dodge said. Someone was coming. Fresh ripples had appeared on the surface of the pool. Dodge and Bibwit quickly lifted Alice to her feet and on to a spirit dame. A little too quickly, perhaps, because she almost fell off, half tumbled over the animal's flank. She regained her balance and settled on its back, facing in the wrong direction. Dodge and Bibwit exchanged a look. This is supposed to be our warrior queen. You, you want to face the other way, Dodge said. The ripples in the pool were larger now, foaming. Dodge and Bibwit helped Alice turn around properly on the spirit dane. Dodge hopped up in front of her and took the reins while Bibwit climbed onto the other animal. And just as the sound of breaking water echoed off the cliff, they galloped into the woods. Alice glanced back to see the cat and his assassin force chasing after them. Perhaps she could still return to London and marry Leopold to be the loving daughter of Dean and Mrs. Liddell and lose herself in that orderly and controlled life she had worked so hard to establish. Here, things were obviously in a bit of a tumult. But who was she trying to convince? It was pure fantasy. The idea that she could return to relatively innocent days in England, the pool of tears red and the cat, she would be hunted down no matter where she was. The whispers of the surrounding trees and shrubs became fainter. The sound of cracking branches and paw crushed leaves closer, louder, even over the heavy footfalls of the spirit danes. They would not be able to outrun the cat. Alice was sure of it and gripped Dodge tighter around the waist. They're faster than we are, she said. Good, then we'll have to fight. Dodge spun the animal around and hardly had time to raise his sword before he was locked in combat with two of the card assassins. Alice lost her balance and fell to the ground. Alice, cried Bibwit, but the cat was upon her. How you've grown, he hissed. The last time I saw you, you were only this high. He held the paw level with his waist and grinned, baring his fangs. She tried to run, but he batted her back in front of him. His tail puffed up and he spat. Again, she tried to run and again he swatted her back, toying with her as a kitten toys with a cockroach before killing it. She knew what she should do. Imagine something, conjure a defense, but it had been so long since she had been able to use her imaginative muscle that try anyway, you have to. She did try, shaking and frowning with the effort, but it was no use. Nothing happened. The cat raised his paw to strike. Alice took in what she supposed would be the last things she ever saw. Dodge jabbing his sword with a, into a card assassin, which folded to the ground dead. The remaining assassins attacking him with increased fury. Bibwit hurrying toward her, saying, I'm a scholar, not a warrior. In a battle of wits, perhaps I could, as he thrust himself between her and the cat. Red will not like such behavior from her secretary, the cat hissed, claws glinting. Bibwit squeezed his eyes shut. A nano orb at rest tends to stay at rest and a nano orb in motion tends to stay in motion so long as neither is acted upon by an external force, he whispered, as if he might indeed combat the cat's physical strength with the superior strength of his mind. He went on to recite a host of learned tidbits that he was amazed he had time to utter considering the usual efficiency and speed of the cat when piercing some poor soul to the quick. Alice was just as amazed as Bibwit, though for different reasons. Her eyes were wide open, and just as the cat was bringing his paw down on the tutor, his five white pawns dropped from the trees, two of them taking the blow meant for Bibwit. A battery of white chessmen jumped from the brush, and camouflaged pack of reds cut dealt themselves out with the sound of rapidly opening and closing scissor blades. The skirmish of the whispering woods was in full blood. Alice tugged at Bibwit's sleeve. Oh, he said, opening his eyes to the scene. Leave here, a rook shouted at them. We'll keep them at bay. Go, now. Though engaged in a deadly contest with a three card, the rook managed to bow to Alice. Princess, he said. Dodge came galloping up on a spirit dane, lifted Alice into the saddle behind him. 
Bibwit clambered up after her, and the three of them sped off as the clashings of steel on steel. The guttural grunts and hoarse cries of combat faded into the distance. Alice turned for one last look at the raging cat, at the brave chessmen who had put themselves in mortal danger for her sake. Most of them won't make it, Dodge said, urging their spirit dane toward Wondertropolis, where they would skirt through major war thoroughfares on their way to the everlasting forest. But you're safe for now. Okay, so the DOKs I'm about to do are for students who are new. My new students are probably pretty confused, but this is part three, and so it's going to have a plot of its own, and I don't want you to have to read the whole book. So we're going to frame these DOKs um, for you specifically. So DOK ones are questions whose answers can be pointed out in the text. For each chapter, you have to do five of these and you do them on your own sheet of paper. So if you look on page 209, Bibwit Hart, blue green veins pulsing anxiously beneath his translucent skin of his learned head, waited on the shore of the pool of tears with two spirit Danes hobbled at his side. So a good question here would be, where is Bibwit Hart? And the answer is at the pool of tears. Okay, another one would be, What excuse did Bibwit Hart give to Queen Red about why he needed a break? And he says on the top of page 210 that his hand is cramped and he needs a break. Um, so there's another DOK one. DOK stands for depth of knowledge, by the way. Okay. And another question would be, where is Bibwit Hart supposed to meet Red? Or when even? And that answer is also on page 210. She says, you have until the red moon rises to meet me in the observation dome. So he has to meet her in the observation dome by the time the red moon rises. Okay. Uh, another DOK1. And by, mind you, DOK1 is like the lowest level. So... This is just basic comprehension questions you're coming up with, and you should do this as you read. That's the easiest way. So um, <clears throat> the other DOK one would be uh, where does Dodge and where do Dodge and Alice come from? And you would just put the pool of tears. My other students know where they really came from, but um, you guys would just put pool of tears because that's all you know. Um, and then the other thing you could ask is, um, who arrives after Dodge and Alice? And that would be the cat, the cat. Another level one would be, what does Alice try to do? She tries to imagine something on page 214 and she can't do it. Okay, so now let's do DOK level twos. Level twos are a bit harder. They still um, specifically reference the text, but they require us to infer or draw conclusions, or in other words, just think about our answer and come up with our answer based on what we know. So, um, one question would be, um, how does Red feel about Bibwit Heart? And we can tell based on what is described on page 210, she doesn't much care for him, especially because she plans on killing him. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you have to come up with four DOK2s per chapter. So that's nine questions total per chapter. You just have to do this as you go. Um, if you wait till the end, it's torture and it seems like two assignments when really it should just be one. Okay, another one would be... Um, hmm. We can kind of figure out who is supposed to be in power here. So a good question would, would be... 
who is supposed to be in power. And we can guess that Princess Alice is based on the way everyone reacts to her. Um, another question would be, who does the cat work for? And we can guess that the cat works for Red and is set out to kill Alice. Um, on page 212, we can kind of sense some um, anxiety about Alice becoming uh, queen. So toward the bottom of 212, dodge and bibwit, exchange a look. This is supposed to be our warrior queen. Um, and so a good level two question would be, how do dodge and bibwit feel about Alice right now? And they're very concerned that she's not ready. Um Another question, another level two question would be, uh, hmm. How does Alice feel about coming back to Wonderland? And on 2.13, um, I guess she's nervous about it. Um, and she, because she says here, things were obviously in a bit of a tumult, but who is she trying to convince? So it, we can guess the word tumult doesn't mean anything good. Um, which brings me to the other type of level two question, which is a context clue level two question, which are perfectly fine. If you don't know what a word means, but you can figure it out based on how it's used, then that's a context clue situation and you can do that with level two. So here on page 213, here things were obviously in a bit of a tumult. Given the descriptions of everything in the chapter and the fighting and chaos, we can guess tumult means something like chaos or disorder or disorganization or, um, violence or whatever we can guess it it means one of those things based on how it's used and so that would be your answer to that okay then there's the level three a level three question you only have to come up with one for the entire week a level three question is the highest form of learning and it's where you connect everything that you read to the world around you and so your question should not specifically mention the book <clears throat> but can use the book as support for your answer so based only on chapter 31, you could say, hmm, I got to think about this one. Okay, so Alice decides to go along with this and her instinct about Dodge and Bibwit instead of just going back to London. She seems to decide and just go along with it. Um... So I'm going to say that that's something to do with bravery. So a good question would be, what makes people brave? And then you could use the fact that she does this anyway, even though she's afraid, even though it's uncertain, she does it anyway. Um, and that's what makes her brave. She's doing this. She, you know, bravery isn't an absence of fear. It's facing your fears. So that would be a good level uh, three question. So um, now I won't do this with every chapter, but I really hope that this gets you off to a good start. Um, DOKs are not supposed to be difficult. And I think a lot of my students have made them more difficult than they should be. If you do them as you read, they should be as easy as what I just did here, even for you. Okay. I'm really glad to have you and um, I'll post everything we read here on YouTube. So uh, thanks for tuning in.